So hello, my name's Caroline and I'm the wellbeing practitioner at Carers in Bedfordshire and this is a presentation on understanding stress. So we're going to look at what is stress? Why do we experience stress? Some symptoms of stress? How we can identify our stress triggers? How we can cope with our stress? And hopefully this will give you a, a better understanding of stress overall and how you can manage it when you're feeling a bit overwhelmed. So firstly, what is stress? So what does stress mean to you? So take some time to think about what comes to mind when I say the word stress. Does a particular situation come to mind? A particular feeling? A particular thought? Just have a think about what stress means to you. So one of the definitions of stress is the body's reaction to any change that it experiences, which requires an adjustment or response. The body reacts to these changes with physical, mental and emotional responses. And another definition is stress is our body's response to pressure. And it's often triggered when we experience something new, unexpected, or that threatens our sense of self, or when we feel we have little control over a situation. So why do we experience stress? So we all feel stress from time to time. As those kind of definitions just showed us there, it's kind of any time a situation kind of demands pressure from us or demands a change, which happens to all of us from time to time. And it's completely natural in response to times that we may feel challenged or overwhelmed. We might have a lot up on our plate and feel stressed or feel like the task is maybe needs a bit more work than we're used to. And again, that's called stress. So although it has negative connotations, stress can be positive. It can motivate us, increase our productivity, help our creativity, prepare us for challenges or keep us focused. For example, sport, when we're under pressure and stressed, we can perform really well or even public spe speaking. We might feel really nervous to speak at first and feel like it's a stressful event, but actually um, it can help keep, keep us focused. It can, we can overcome new challenges and it can um, motivate us to kind of do more of these things in the future once we kind of overcome a stressful experience once. So if stress is a completely natural response, then why is it a problem? So here um, is a kind of stress um, graph for you and you can see at the at the bottom here it says level of pressure so this is kind of the level of of stress that we might experience so if we have a low level of stress we're going to be bored and if we have too much stress we're going to be in this kind of strain or burnout um phase and this ideal zone is when we have a moderate to high level of pressure and that's when we experience optimal performance. So maybe kind of stepping outside of that comfort zone and stretching ourselves to try new things. That's when we can kind of grow. We can learn new things kind of for sport. We can push ourselves for work. We might be able to kind of um, challenge ourselves and kind of get better results. It might even be things like just learning how to get out of your comfort zone of day to day tasks. So a little bit of stress kind of if too little stress we get bored too much we get strained on burnout but we want a bit so we can kind of be in that comfort zone or stretch outside our comfort zone so when is stress a problem in the short term stress can be beneficial like we've said it can help us be productive it can motivate us we can kind of make those um short snappy decisions but if we experience stress in the long term, it can have damaging effects on our health and it can affect our brains and our bodies. If we're experiencing too much stress for a long period of time, like the graph kind of showed, if we're getting into this high or very high level of stress, we're experiencing strain or burnout. And that's when we are unable to kind of function to normal capacity, can't go about our day to day tasks. And that's when stress becomes a problem for us. So here we're going to watch a video about how stress can impact the body. Um, so hopefully you can hear it. If you can't hear it, just message in the chat if you can't. Cramming for a test? Trying to get more done than you have time to do? 
Stress is a feeling we all experience when we are challenged or overwhelmed. But more than just an emotion, stress is a hardwired physical response that travels throughout your entire body. In the short term, stress can be advantageous, but when activated too often or too long, your primitive fight-or-flight stress response not only changes your brain, but also damages many of the other organs and cells throughout your body. Your adrenal gland releases the stress hormones cortisol, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and norepinephrine. As these hormones travel through your bloodstream, they easily reach your blood vessels and heart. Adrenaline causes your heart to beat faster and raises your blood pressure, over time causing hypertension. Cortisol can also cause the endothelium, or inner lining, of blood vessels to not function normally. Scientists now know that this is an early step in triggering the process of atherosclerosis, or cholesterol plaque buildup in your arteries. Together, these changes increase your chances of a heart attack or stroke. When your brain senses stress, it activates your autonomic nervous system. Through this network of nerve connections, your big brain communicates stress to your enteric or intestinal nervous system. Besides causing butterflies in your stomach, this brain-gut connection can disturb the natural rhythmic contractions that move food through your gut, leading to irritable bowel syndrome, and can increase your gut sensitivity to acid, making you more likely to feel heartburn. Via the gut's nervous system, stress can also change the composition and function of your gut bacteria, which may affect your digestive and overall health. Speaking of digestion, does chronic stress affect your waistline? Well, yes. Cortisol can increase your appetite. It tells your body to replenish your energy stores with energy-dense foods and carbs, causing you to crave comfort foods. High levels of cortisol can also cause you to put on those extra calories as visceral or deep belly fat. This type of fat doesn't just make it harder to button your pants. It is an organ that actively releases hormones and immune system chemicals, called cytokines, that can increase your risk of developing chronic diseases, such as heart disease and insulin resistance. Meanwhile, stress hormones affect immune cells in a variety of ways. Initially, they help prepare to fight invaders and heal after injury, but chronic stress can dampen the function of some immune cells, make you more susceptible to infections, and slow the rate you heal. Want to live a long life? You may have to curb your chronic stress. That's because it has even been associated with shortened telomeres, the shoelace tip ends of chromosomes that measure a cell's age. Telomeres cap chromosomes to allow DNA to get copied every time a cell divides without damaging the cell's genetic code, and they shorten with each cell division. When telomeres become too short, a cell can no longer divide, and it dies. As if all that weren't enough, chronic stress has even more ways it can sabotage your health, including acne, hair loss, sexual dysfunction, headaches, muscle tension, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, and irritability. So, what does all this mean for you? Your life will always be filled with stressful situations, but what matters to your brain and entire body is how you respond to that stress. If you can view those situations as challenges you can control and master, rather than as threats that are insurmountable, you will perform better in the short run and stay healthy in the long run. So hopefully that video is helpful in kind of showing you the ways that stress can have that negative effect on our body, especially chronic long-term stress. And now we're going to have a look at some of those symptoms in a bit more detail. And then we're going to go on to think about how we can implement changes to help us manage our stress so that we don't experience as much of the long-term effects of it. So how does the fight, flight, freeze effect us? So this is the fight, flight, freeze response, which happens automatically when we're in a stressful situation in response to danger or threat 
or kind of wanting to protect ourselves. And this happens automatically, for example, if you were maybe kind of stepping out in front of in, to the road and a car comes past, you might experience a heart rate rise, but we might also step back from the pavement because we are under pressure to get out of the way of that fast moving car. So fight, flight, freeze affects us um, when we are anxious as well. So a lot of these symptoms can be very similar when we're anxious as when we're stressed. So we might experience a lack of memory or attention. So our prefrontal cortex is kind of fighting against our amygdala. So we have our brain here, the prefrontal cortex at the front, right behind our forehead. And where our thumb is inside would be our amygdala. This is kind of like our feelings brain, that really quick fire response to threat threat or danger fires off and kind of flips our lid and turns off the prefrontal cortex so we can act really quickly. Um, but if that kind of switch is lifted for far too long, that's when we can have our memory and attention um, doesn't work to its full capacity because we're working in a really short term um, way. So the thinking brain is shutting down to preserve the energy, but long term we can have memory or attention difficulties. We might experience blushing and sweating as a way of our body trying to cool us down. We might experience our increased heart rate, kind of plumping that blood around the body. We might feel we have tingly or numb hands or pins and needle type sensations on our body as the blood leaves um, these parts of the body to go to major organs to kind of fight flight or freeze to try and protect ourselves from that stressful situation. Some of our muscles might feel like jelly and others might feel tense, again, because the blood's moving away from those smaller muscles and towards those larger, more important muscles to provide more strength so we can deal with that stressful situation. We might experience butterflies in the stomach, again, as the blood moves away from the focusing on digestion towards those major organs, ready for fight and flight. And we might also experience a sudden urge to go to the toilet because emptying our bowels or our bladder makes the body lighter, makes it easier for us to kind of implement this fight, flight, freeze response. So you can see kind of a lot of these symptoms will be similar if we're stressed or anxious, and they're often quite um, interlinked in stressful situations. We can feel quite on edge when we are stressed. So thinking about symptoms, what symptoms do you experience? So the ones I just went through that are triggered by the fight, flight, freeze response, um, in response to stresses. You might experience all of those, you might experience none of those, you might experience entirely different ones. So just taking some time now to think about what symptoms do you experience. So these could be physical symptoms, for example, experiencing headaches or migraines. You might feel dizzy or even faint. You might experience muscle tension or pains. You might have an increased heart rate or feel chest pains. You might feel fatigued or excessively tired, even if you've had a good night's sleep. You might experience weight gain, like we saw in that video as well. Stress can make us um, release cortisol, which wants us to try and go for those comfort foods, those carb heavy, heavy foods, and um, to try and comfort eat and to help us feel a bit better, which maybe kind of feel, help us feel better in the short term having that delicious donut or something like that. But in the long term, constantly reaching for those foods might result in weight gain. You might have acne, and that could be at any age. You might also experience hair loss, which can also be a sign of stress, or often some of the behavioral symptoms could be pulling out hairs when we feel stress, whether that's kind of hairs on our head, our eyebrows, our eyelashes, on our arms, absolutely anywhere, or it could just fall out more naturally. You might experience sexual dysfunction or loss of libido. You might also just experience a general decline in our health, not feel quite like ourselves, not kind of feel physically up to things that we can we normally get on with in our day to day lives. You could also experience emotional symptoms like difficulty concentrating, like we said before, the prefrontal cortex is kind of being shut off so the amygdala can get to work and respond really quickly, but that can make things difficult for us to concentrate on one task at a time. 
you might find were quite indecisive, find decisions really overwhelming and even stressful, even small decisions like what to wear in the morning or deciding what to eat. We might have lapses in memory or experience forgetfulness. We might also have a general feeling of feeling overwhelmed. We might feel really isolated and feel like there's no one out there that can help us. And we might have an increased or consistent worrying. Like I said earlier, it's often in, our stress is often, in, often interlinked with our anxiety. So we kind of feel more anxious or have more or more consistent worries than usual. And then some behavioral symptoms we might experience. Increased irritability, we might be frustrated easily, find that we're getting angry, find that we have quite a short fuse. We might have sleeping problems or sleeping difficulties, be that finding it hard to get to sleep and waking up throughout the night or struggling to get up in the mornings. We might have eating problems or difficulties, we might not feel hungry, we might forget to eat or kind of the other way that we spoke about before, comfort eating and um, feeling like we're not ever satisfying that hunger uh, is a sign of stress. Avoidance, we might avoid people, we might avoid leaving the house, we might avoid engaging with friends, families, hobbies that we normally enjoy. And we might notice an increase in drinking or smoking behaviours or other coping strategies that maybe are, aren't as good for us in the long term, but help to alleviate stress in the short term. And on top of this as well, the kind of increased ability for some people, um, instead of maybe going to more the angry side, we might feel that we're more tearful, feel on the verge of tears, or even things can feel so overwhelming that we feel quite numb, that we're not sure how we feel and just kind of shut down from everyone. So how can we identify our stress triggers? If we know what stress is, what it does to our body and the way that we feel, how can we identify our own stress triggers? So looking at what symptoms do you experience and having a think about are these thoughts that you have, feelings that you have, are these behaviours that you're engaging when you're stressed and it might be helpful to kind of um, write these down, kind of think about exactly what it looks like for you. And also thinking about do you notice when stress is building? For these symptoms that you experience, is it that you suddenly go from feeling absolutely fine to feeling overwhelmed all at once? Or do you notice it starting to build? Do you notice that maybe you kind of feel a bit off, you feel a bit down, you feel a bit tired, um, and you notice kind of when that stress is building? Because if you're able to notice when it's building, then you'll know um, how to implement change before it gets to that overwhelming stage. And it can also be helpful to think about how do you currently handle stress at the moment? So you might be engaging with behaviours that we said before, like coping with alcohol or um, other substances. You might be handling stress by talking to other people. You might be handling stress in an entirely different way. But thinking about how you currently handle stress, thinking about is that way you currently handle it working for you? Or do maybe you need to think about making some changes? So once you've kind of had a look at that, kind of what symptoms you experience, whether they're thoughts, feelings or behaviours, whether you notice the stress building and how you currently handle the stress, we're going to now look at some common triggers that you might experience are stresses for you or might not. Everyone's different. So some of these things people are going to find really stressful, whereas for others, they can just take them in their stride and vice versa. So a stressor, by definition, is anything that causes stress it can be small things big things medium things it can be kind of that straw that broke the camel's back just when we drop something that can be a big stressor or it can be a big life event so here are a bunch of examples so it might just be general frustration that causes stress for example being stuck in traffic um, and that could even be kind of people traffic when we're walking down the street and people are walking slowly or we find ourselves in queues we can find that very stressful some people find conflict very stressful, whether that's conflict that they're engaging in and um, having an argument with someone or witnessing a conflict kind of maybe in the home, in a public place or even on TV, kind of witnessing that can be really difficult. You might experience pressure or increased responsibility and that might be within your working role, for example, in your caring role as things change or the person you care for is maybe their um, health declines or their needs get 
um, they need different things or there's more pressure from other family members that can't help out and then you're taking on more responsibility because they can't do as much we'll experience that kind of increase in pressure and increase in responsibility that can be a stressor for us when we might be worried or face uncertainty so for example the past kind of 18 months or so with the pandemic has been a very uncertain time us not knowing what's going to happen kind of not knowing even now as restrictions start to, to lift and um, whether holidays will be possible whether they can see friends and family kind of what maybe their job security looks like anything like that so that can bring a lot of uncertainty which can cause stress Financial difficulties can cause stress, whether that's kind of being able to pay bills, mortgage, even the stress of kind of buying a house, getting a new house, moving, job losses, kind of transferring jobs, anything like that. And then there's a kind of life changes that we all go through. So bereavement or loss, interpersonal problems or relationship breakdown, be that with family, friends, romantic relationships. We might experience health problems life changes like marriage or separation, divorce, transitions, so moving to a new job, a new school, moving house, moving area, it can even be moving doctors, um, moving care professionals, care providers, all of those sorts of transitions can be really difficult. So we can think now that we've kind of maybe identified some common stress stresses for ourselves, think about the stress bucket. So here we have our bucket and the size of the bucket um, is our vulnerability. So this size of the bucket might vary from day to day. So some days you might wake up and feel, I just can't cope with very much today. And our buckets might be quite small that day. Whereas other days we feel in a good place and we feel able to cope with a lot more. So our stress bucket is gonna be a bit bigger. And then stress flows into the bucket. And this can be small things or big things. So it can be anything from this list here of common triggers, or it can be entirely different things. So it might be having an argument with a family member. It could be that you're, um, you took your dog out for a walk and it got really dirty and you don't have time to wash up on your way to work. You could get stuck in traffic. You could have had an appointment cancellation. You could, um, drop and break something that causes you stress, absolutely anything, but stress flows in that bucket. And once that bucket gets full, it gets full and full of all these things. And when it gets, starts to overflow, that's when we feel ourselves kind of snapping. We emotionally overflow. And we can overflow through kind of showing aggression or anger. We can kind of be very emotional and, and cry or get very upset. We might also kind of just feel numbness. It's all too much. So we just kind of turn off completely. But what we want to do is think here of ways that we can add taps onto our stress bucket to help us cope with the situation. So as we fill this bucket up with stress, we're able to let out some of that stress as the day or week goes on. So good coping is when the tap is kind of working, so let the stress out. And bad coping is maybe when the tap's not working, so the bucket fills so good coping the strategies might be talking to friends it might be um going on a nice long walk it might be listening to music it might be taking part in exercise it might be being kind of socially engaged with others absolutely anything that helps you reduce your stress for some people it can be small things like watching birds outside or coloring for others it may be planning events in the future things like that but an example of say bad coping would be something like maybe using alcohol or other substances that maybe you think it helps in, in the short term but maybe the next day after you feel a bit rubbish and even a bit more stressed so that kind of fills back into the bucket so the aim is to have even though all of us have a stress bucket and all of us are having stress flowing into that bucket at different rates from a day to day we want to have as many taps working that we can to help reduce our level of stress and for these items that we put inside the stress bucket, we can try and think about whether they are inside our control or outside of our control. Um, and we can use that using the donor of control. So what's inside this donor is what is in my control and what actionable steps may I take? So I might be really stressed that I haven't heard from my doctor regarding a blood test. So what I can do, actionable steps, is I can call the doctor and ask them, 
when I'm due to have my blood test, for example. Or what else is in my control? I might feel like I'm not getting enough exercise and feel a bit kind of sluggish. And what actionable steps can I take? I can make a purposeful effort to spend time outside, walk up and down the stairs in my house, do little bits of exercise that help me feel better. And then outside the donut is kind of things that are outside of my control. Um, so this could be things like the COVID situation. It could be things like the weather, in regards to kind of the, host, the blood test appointment example, I can't actually pick when my blood test is or how busy the doctor's is. Um, so I can kind of think, OK, is it helpful to stress about these things? So I can't change what the weather is like outside. So is there any point of me stressing about it or should I try and think about letting those worries go? So once we've done our kind of our stress bucket, we can write in all the different things that maybe are stressing us out. And then after we've done that task, try and split those things into what is inside my control and what is outside my control. And then you've got a bunch of things that have actual steps to help improve that stress. And then you've got a bunch of things that maybe you need a bit of a distraction from. So now we're going to look at how we can cope with stress. So things that really help is kind of first off starting about looking at your current response to stress. So if you go back to the stress bucket example, what sort of taps have you got on your bucket? Have you got taps that are working really well, letting out lots of stress? Or have you got taps that maybe are let out little droplets of stress? Having a think about kind of what is your current response to stress? If you're in a stressful situation, what do you normally do to help yourself? You can then think about adjusting your outlook or challenging your thoughts. So using the donut of control, you can think about, OK, what well, are these things that I'm stressed about inside or outside of my control? Can I take actionable steps to help solve these problems or am I best not wasting my time worrying about these things because I can't do anything about them anyway? Or we can challenge these thoughts and think about, OK, are these things that I should be worried about or how likely is it that these things are going to be a problem for me? Because sometimes we do have what if sort of scenarios that pop into our heads that maybe aren't very likely to happen, but we're just maybe a little bit worried about them. We can use gratitude, positive affirmations or positive self-talk to help us. So research has shown that kind of writing down three things each day that you're thankful for or grateful for or looking forward to and um, can really help our outlook. Our memories are really, really emotional. So when we think of positive things, we're kind of encouraging our brain to use those positive thought pathways and kind of release those happy hormones. So we can think about what we're grateful of, whether that's a, a lovely sunny day, a delicious cup of tea, a text from a friend, looking forward to a trip. Um, Kind of even if it's just the garden centre or thinking about things that have happened in the past that we're really grateful of. We can also use positive affirmations or positive self-talk. So when we look at ourselves in the mirror, when we're stressed, we often say, oh, you're rubbish, you can't cope. It's all just too much. But actually telling ourselves, yes, you can do this. You've done it once before. You can do it again. Um, you're really great at solving problems. You're really creative. Telling us ourselves all these things that we like about ourselves can be a really important um, an important part of helping us feel that we're able to cope with stresses when we believe in ourselves and talk to ourselves in a positive way that we would maybe talk to a friend. Getting a good night's sleep is really important for our stress. Often when we are stressed we find it really hard to sleep so getting into a good routine of maybe going to bed at the same time or maybe writing down our worries before we go to bed so they're not in our head when we're lying there kind of thinking about things over and over again. But getting a good night's sleep is really important because it helps reduce our stress levels and helps us to regulate our mood a bit better. We can also engage with our senses. So stress, kind of, as we said um, before in watching the video, it has a really negative effect on our body if it's kind of we've experienced it in the long term and it can feel very internal. We can feel very isolated, kind of all consumed by how uncomfortable our body feels or how uncomfortable our thoughts are. But we can engage in our senses and the world around us to try and kind of open up um, our view and think about the stress and kind of, um, kind of similar to adjusting our outlook, kind of looking at the wider picture. So we can use the 5-4-3-2-1 technique, which kind of goes through our senses. 
um, kind of the looking around, okay, when you're stressed, what around you, five things that you can see. So looking around you, what can you see? I can see a pen, I can see a candle, I can see a water bottle, I can see a speaker, I can see some headphones. And then four things that you can feel or you can touch. So I can feel the keys on my laptop, I can feel um, the desk, I can feel my feet in some warm socks, I can feel kind of a cool breeze coming in from the window. And then three things that you can hear. So I can hear the sheep barring outside, I can hear the clock ticking in the background, I can hear the whir of my laptop and fan. And two things that you can smell. So this might be that you can smell um, something that you've had for lunch, you might have a candle or some perfume, you might have just washed your hair or smell laundry detergent, you might have the window open and smell kind of freshly cut grass, anything like that. What can you smell? And the last one, number one, one thing that you can taste. So you can have a sip of water and notice how it tastes. Or kind of having a big piece of gum or a little snack, or just thinking about what's your favourite thing to eat. And that can help us kind of engage with the world around us and our senses rather than kind of focusing on those stressful thoughts in our head or those uncomfortable feelings in our body. Another helpful one as well is PMR, which stands for progressive muscle relaxation. So this is a really good one that can help us get to sleep. So when we're lying in bed and um, we can start at our toes and scrunching them up really, really, really tight and then letting go. And then working up our body in our muscle groups, working all the way up to begin to get to the top of our head and our whole body all at once, tensing and tensing, tensing and relaxing. And that constant tense and relax, tense and relax through our muscle groups helps to encourage our whole body to relieve that tension that we're experiencing from that stress and helps us to relax as we go to bed. And um, often when we're stressed, we hold a lot of tension up in our shoulders, up here, our jaw might ache because we clench our jaw. We might notice the tongue is at the roof of our mouth. So engaging with our senses and actually thinking, okay, I'm really stressed. I'm going to relax my shoulders, unclench my jaw, remove the tongue from the roof of my mouth, and just kind of notice that sensation of calm. We can also apply breathing techniques, for example, kind of deep belly breaths, kind of hands on our, our belly, breathing in, noticing our belly expand and breathing out. Noticing that air leaving our belly, breathing in and out. And to kind of taking time to slow things down, focusing on our breath um, can be really, really helpful to help relieve that stress. And it can also be helpful to plan ahead for stressful situations, create a schedule or a to-do list of what things that you've got on that day so you're not feeling as overwhelmed and prioritizing tasks or learning to say no. We might have a really long to-do list, but actually what is the most important things or things that we need to do and prioritize those tasks. And maybe some tasks can wait. Maybe some tasks we don't even need to do at all. And I'm really thinking about what are those kind of really important tasks and what are the ones that we can leave for maybe a different day. And that can help um, us manage our stress a bit better. So now we're going to go through a couple of these techniques together. So it might be really helpful if you kind of do this as well at home as you watch. So this is the five, four, three, two, one. I was technique I was talking about that helps us that takes us through our senses to help us focus on the world around us. This technique will take you through your five senses to help remind you of the present. This is a calming technique that can help you get through tough or stressful situations. Take a deep belly breath to begin. Number five, look. Look around for five things that you can see and say them out loud. For example, you could say, I see a burger. I see a bird. I see a soccer ball. Number four, feel. Pay attention to your body and think of four things that you can feel and say them out loud. For example, you could say, I feel my feet warm in my socks. I feel the hair on the back of my neck. Or I feel the pillow I'm sitting on. Number three, listen. Listen for three sounds. Say the things out loud. It could be the sound of running feet, an airplane flying by, 
or the sound of a dog barking. Number two, smell. Say two things you can smell. It's okay to move to another spot and sniff something. If you can't smell anything at the moment, or you can't move, then name two of your favorite smells. Number one, taste. Say one thing you can taste. It may be the toothpaste from brushing your teeth or the flavor of your bubble gum. If you can't taste anything, then say your favorite thing to taste. Take another deep belly breath to end. Okay, so hopefully that, that helped you kind of have a little practice run of how to use that five, four, three, two, one technique. And now we're gonna do some breathing together. So hopefully you can kind of get comfortable and follow the breathing along as we go through it. So hopefully that breathing was really relaxing for you and hopefully you can notice how kind of slowing everything down helps you to feel calm and relieve some of that stress. So now we're gonna look at some other ways to cope with stress. So kind of most importantly, really looking after your body, staying hydrated, 
feeding your body nutritious food, taking part in regular aerobic exercise because that releases those endorphins, those happy chemicals and happy hormones, sorry, that helps you to feel really good. Staying hydrated, drinking lots of water, um, whether that's kind of flavoured water or water kind of within squashes or juice, um, it's really important as kind of water helps to increase our mood. Feeding our body nutritious food helps us to feel like we have enough energy, that we're able to cope, and kind of gives us our body all those nutrients that we need for growth and repair. So it's really important that we look after ourselves. Slowing things down, like we kind of just did there, doing some slow breathing, or we can use meditation or mindfulness. There's lots of fantastic videos on YouTube or apps out there. For example, Headspace is a really good one. And um, I know even though there's on Netflix, there's um, kind of programs on meditation that you can watch and kind of helps you to learn a bit more about how to do it yourself yoga as well or have some slow stretching can be really helpful just to kind of slow everything down take notice of your body and help you to relieve some of that stress give yourself a break when we're stressed we often feel really overwhelmed we're going 100 miles a minute um, and we need to kind of slow things down, give ourselves a break. It's really important to look after ourselves so that we can look after other people. So take part in your hobbies, be creative, listen to music, bake some cakes, uh, go on a walk outside, pet an animal, pet your dog, give your cat a cuddle, whatever um, helps you give yourself a break is so important. And build your support network. Talk to other people about how you're feeling, whether that's friends, families, professionals and um, other people. But when we're struggling and stressed, we often feel really isolated. And it's really important to to let people know when, if you need help or just even to get things off your chest. And um, it can be really helpful to help manage that stress. So now kind of to, to close things off before I stop the recording and answer any questions that we have in for those um, watching live. Um, this video on managing stress kind of summarises the things that we've discussed um, in this presentation so far. Watch this. One little piece of paper can have a remarkable effect. Stress is stressful. But if you understand a bit about what it is, you'll be better able to deal with it. First though, take a few deep breaths. In fact, do that any time you feel stressed. It helps. Stress is a survival mechanism. When danger appears, it can get you out of trouble quickly. Your body crashes up the gears and throws all its resources into getting you moving. Your heart pumps furiously to increase blood pressure, glucose is sent to the muscles as a fuel injection, and you become totally focused on what psychologists call fight or flight. Thing is, this emergency state is only meant to last just long enough to get you out of danger. But here in the 21st century, we stress about different things, and for much, much longer. Your brain and body stay on red alert and you'll be less able to think clearly, learn or remember things. Take a few more deep breaths. Because as you now know, stress is a physical reaction and deep breathing helps to counteract its effects. So, what else can you do? Okay, top tips to reduce stress. First, get plenty of exercise. Let out all that locked up energy. Now, back to the problem. Get in control. Scope out the situation and how you're going to tackle it. Don't stress alone. Talk to someone. Socialize and have a laugh. You can't laugh and quake with fear at the same time. Get down with nature on a big or small scale. And if your mind won't stop worrying, give it something else to do instead. Yes, yeah, so I hope you 
this presentation has been helpful in helping you understand a bit more about stress. And um, if you've got any further questions, and um, for those kind of watching um, right now, you can call us at Carers in Bedfordshire on 0300 1919. You can contact myself, Caroline, the wellbeing practitioner at Carers in Bedfordshire at wellbeing at carersinbed.org.uk or to contact me directly, my email is caroline.carter at carersinbeds.org.uk. But either of these um, email addresses will get to me and we can talk further about wellbeing and ways that we can support you in your caring role. Or if you want to find out more about carers, more about what's on at Carers in Bedfordshire or sign up to our groups um, or further talks, you can visit our website at www.carersinbeds.org.uk. I hope you find this helpful.